Hello everybody and welcome back to SEG 2900. This is lecture number three. So up until now, we've kind of given the basis for the startup project, got you into teams, came up with a product definition and an idea, got your project set up all with git and github.com, kind of getting your remote repositories into place. And then last week we talked all about, um, last time we talked all about your marketing website structure, just kind of get into layout and the user experience. And we started to talk about one of the three languages that we're learning this uh, term, which is uh, HTML. Now today, we're going to talk about adding some polish to your design, and then we're talking. We're gonna, sorry, we're going to talk about the second language that we're going to learn about, which is CSS. Okay, so today's module there's two major parts: one part called styling, and the second part called CSS. Okay. All right, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is the website style. And really what we're talking about is creating style guidelines for your website, okay? Um, and then the second piece we're gonna talk about is a specific language called cascading style sheets and how we code that style into our website, okay? So there's two parts of this as well, kind of the theoretical design piece and then the actual coding piece. Okay, so let's talk about the first piece, which is the website marketing style. So we talked about the marketing website structure last week, uh, last lecture. So you know where things are, how pages are laid out, all that kind of stuff. And I told you at that time we're not concentrating on colors, fonts, look, style, feel, all that. We're not concentrating on that. Well, today we are concentrating on that. So today we're talking about kind of adding a final gloss or polish to the website. In other words what it's actually gonna look like and feel to the end user, right? Because the same website with the same layout can feel very different depending on your font choice, your color choice, your mood, all that stuff comes into play here, okay? So when we talk about coming up with style guidelines for our website, um, these, are kinds of the, these are the kinds of questions you might wanna be asking yourself. Um, what colors are we gonna use, okay? Are we gonna use red, blue, orange, light, pastel colors, very monotone colors, uh, one set of colors versus another set of colors. What are we, what are we gonna use exactly? Um, what is the overall aesthetic feeling that you want? So is this a loud, exciting website? Is this a calm, peaceful website? You know, if you are, for example, designing a meditation product, you don't want a website that's loud and uh, crazy, right? You want a kind of calm feeling. If you're designing a business professional website, there may be a certain feeling you're going for there. If you're designing kind of a fun kids website, you know, there may be something there. If you're designing kind of an edgy, uh, you know, uh, website, it might be something there. So what's the overall feeling that you want? Uh, what fonts are you going to use to kind of express that feeling? Um, are they going to be serif fonts, sans serif fonts? Uh, you know, serif fonts are ones with the little kind of edges, you know, sans serif doesn't have that, right? Um, are, are you going to be using, uh, you know, thick fonts, thin fonts, uh, a variety of those, maybe two or three fonts? What fonts are you going to use? Um, what will the links and buttons look like? You know, links and buttons are such a big part of websites. So how are they going to look? Are they going to look with rounded corners, with shadows, 3D, flat? You know, what are they going to look like? What are your tables going to look like? Are they going to be alternating row colors? Are they going to have borders, no borders? Um, what are your icons going to look like? Again, 3D icons, shadow icons, flat icons, simple icons, linear icons, you know, all these things. So, so these are the kinds of questions you want to ask yourself among your team. Um, you know, what is it going to look like? And again, you can draw inspiration from other websites, right? Look at your favorite websites and how they do uh, their style. So let's take one of these examples and, and explore it, okay? Or, or sorry, not one. Let's take, a, let's take a look at a couple of these examples and explore how we might decide on them, okay? So colors is a big one, okay? So you and your team are gonna decide what is the color palette of our website. Um, so your color palette may look like this, so just a kind of a, sw uh, a bunch of swatches, okay? So here's a bunch of colors that we're gonna use for the website and we're gonna stick to only those colors. Okay, um, so a couple blues, a couple greens and grays, and then occasionally this kind of bright orange. You know, that might be a way to do it. Okay, there's a great website that Adobe has put out called color.adobe.com. And if you check it out, it's a great way to come up with a color palette, actually. Um, it's an interactive website where you can actually, um, you know, like, pick complementary colors or analogous colors, uh, colors that go well together, right? Uh, it's a really great website, so you want, definitely can check that out. And I think even at one point, I don't know if they still have this, but they used to have an app that you could use your phone and you could take a picture of something and it would pick a color scheme based on that. So, 
you know, if you kind of went out and you saw this nice fall scene of all these fall colors, you know, all these leaves, take a picture, it would kind of pick a bunch of colors that kind of go with that or whatever. So um, really, really can draw inspiration from a lot of things. I mean, maybe you're walking down the street and you see a great poster, take a picture of it and take note of all the colors in that, right? So that's a great way to discuss colors, okay? Um, let's take another example. What are our buttons going to look like, okay? Well, here's a, here's a couple of examples of a lot of buttons, you know. Are they going to have a border? Are they not going to have a border? Are they going to be square? Are they going to have a shadow? You know, uh, what's the what's the color of the text inside the button? You know, lots, lots to discuss there, right? Um, you know, is it going to look 3D? Is it going to look flat? You know, like flat was really a big thing, you know, maybe five, five years ago or 10 years ago, flat really became a big thing. And now gradients are becoming really, really, uh, really popular nowadays. So, um, you might want to kind of discuss those kinds of things. Um, what's the typography going to look like? In other words, what is the text going to look like, right? So here's a couple of examples. So here's what our headers may look like. Okay, uh, that's the size of, the, of a level one header, a level two header, a level three header. Um, these are the fonts that we might use, you know, um, the italic and the bold and, and these kind of things. So these are fonts that you might want to explore. Um, you know, a good thing to, to if, you, if you really don't know how to code fonts into your website, uh, one place you might want to stop is Google, sorry, one place you might want to start is Google Fonts. Google Fonts is this collection of web fonts that are free to use, um, and it's a really great site that you can type in, uh, you can type in your sentence to see how it looks in certain fonts, and then when you're ready to use it, they give you the instructions on how to, how to use those fonts in your website. So Google Fonts is a really great resource, actually, to pick your fonts. Okay. Okay, so... Those are the questions you're kind of going to be asking yourself, and those are the kinds of the, those are the kinds of discussions that you're going to be having around them with your team, figuring out your fonts, figuring out your colors, figuring out your your look and feel, and and the aesthetic that you want and the mood that you want. Um, so, how do you then submit that to us? How how do you what do you produce that you would submit to our 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 TAs and professors to Mark, but how, what would you do in, in, in your job? How would you submit this to clients or to your teammates or whatever, okay? There's a couple of routes you could go, okay? You could go with a, a simple file, okay? You could just go with a simple text file that explains everything in words, okay? So here's an example, so just a text file that says, okay, the overall look and feel is gonna be minimalist and flat. Uh, we're gonna avoid 3D buttons and 3D metal looks. We're gonna avoid those. Um, the website is going to uh, uh, be calm and gentle for the user, okay? For Rumi, uh, the colors are going to expose our personality to the customers and represent that we are calm and pleasing. We want kind of calm and pleasing colors. So these are the colors we're going to use. Um, we're going to adopt flat icons. We're going to use Roboto for the font. Um, you know, the links are not going to be underlined, but they're going to change color when people hover on them. And the buttons that we're going to use are going to be flat, okay? So that that's the most basic kind of style guideline, just kind of explaining it in words. And, and that's perfectly fine. If that's what your team decides to go for, that's perfectly fine. That's one way to go do it. Another way you could do it is a visual style guide. So rather than explaining things in words, you could explain things by using pictures, okay? So you might want to create like a PDF or a graphic that explains all this, okay? So it shows you what the headers look like, it shows you the colors that you're using, um, you know, shows you what the buttons look like and the fonts that you're using, kind of gives them more visual style, um, you know, to what you're, you're going after, okay? And then the third thing that you might do uh, is a UI kit, right? So a UI kit is interesting because what this is is actually a programmed website that shows you everything, all right? So that's another way you can do a visual style guide. So here's an example showing what the buttons look like and the text inputs. Okay, so that is really the style guidelines and the design aspect of your website, okay? So again, you wanna to get together with your team and you wanna discuss these things, okay? So what does our product represent and what's the mood and feeling we're going after and how are we gonna implement that using colors and buttons and all these kind of things, okay? All right, so once you've figured out the design of your website, okay, the structure, and once you figure it out, the style of your, uh, the design style of your website, 
So all those style guidelines. The next step is the second part of this lecture, which is how do we code that? How do we code that into our website? Because by this point, we have the structure, right? We have the HTML, we've coded the HTML. And so we have the overall structure of the website. But now how do we add that polish to the HTML? Well, the way we do that is with the second language that our browser understands, which is called cascading style sheets, or more commonly referred to CSS, okay? So like I said, CSS is another language that browsers understand. And what it does is it allows you to modify the visual style of your HTML code, okay? Your HTML code should always be for structure reasons, okay? So when you talk about a header, it's marking, a header marks a section, right? A second level header mar mar marks a second section. When you have a table, that's a table of data. Um, you know, a paragraph of text. These are more the structure of your website. It's not how it appears. And in fact, uh, a really good rule of thumb is you should never change your structure because of a visual look. So for example, if you use a header one and you find, oh, your header one is too big, so I'm gonna use a header three instead, that's actually a bad practice because you're changing the structure. It's not really a header level three. You're only doing that to make it look a certain way. That's not the way you should do it. You should always leave your structure alone and change how it visually looks using CSS, okay? And so you code your HTML and then you code your CSS to give it a nice kind of polish. So coding CSS allows you to do a lot of things. It allows you to do things like change your color, change font size, change things like padding, like how much space is around your stuff, margins, how much space is between your stuff, and a whole lot more, borders, shadows. There's so much you can do with CSS, okay? To change the visual uh, element of your, of your website, okay? Okay, just like HTML, CSS is a self-learning thing, okay? So in this course, we're not gonna teach you CSS. Um, I've kind of explained to you what it is, but you are gonna have to go learn it by yourself. Just like W3Schools, uh, sorry, just like HTML, we use W3Schools.com, so that's a great place to start. You can Google CSS tutorials all around the internet, and you're gonna be learning CSS by yourself. But with that being said, I am gonna show you a brief demo of uh, how this works, okay? So I'm gonna, sorry, give you a little bit of an overview of this and then show you a brief demo of how it works, okay? So last lecture, we talked about how browsers interpret HTML, right? So we have HTML on the left there and a browser reads that, interprets it, and presents it in a human readable fashion, okay? So that's what HTML does. Well, CSS, you can simply add to your HTML. Okay, so you can see here the difference here. We have this HTML code and right in between the HTML and the body, I added this here, this style tag here. Okay, so there's opening, opening style tag and a closing style tag. And then we have CSS code in here. Now CSS, okay, is something you're gonna learn yourself, but I'll just give you a bit of a preview of how this works. So the way that this works is, um, you specify what you wanna modify. So here I'm gonna say, I'm gonna modify the H1 tag, okay? So I have an H1 tag down here. I'm gonna modify the H1 tag. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the color to blue and the font family to Arial, okay? And when I do that, it changes the appearance of that H1 tag. So the H1 tag here was black and Times New Roman, and here it's Arial and red. And I understand that is a big mistake in my slides. That's been a big mistake in my slides since last year. You know what? I'm going to change that right now. There we go. That's the way it should be. <laughs> okay. So, and that's uh, how the effect of it. Okay. So adding CSS to your HTML code, what it does is it modifies the look of your elements. Okay. So it targets in and it modifies it. Okay, so you specify a target. We call them selectors in CSS. I'm selecting the H1 tags and I'm modifying them. Okay, so let's see a brief demo of this. Okay, so this was my HTML code from last lecture. Okay, we gave a brief demo of that. So let me just bring that up. So welcome to my website. 
So let's say I want my paragraph text now to be bigger and to have a font of Arial, okay? So I come in here and I'm actually gonna specify this inside a head tag. Okay. And this is a CSS. Okay, so to start modifying it, I, I target one of the elements. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use a selector of P. So this is gonna affect all the paragraph tags, and I'm gonna say I want it to be red. Okay, so I save that, refresh this, and you see the text is now red. Okay, I can also change the font, so I can say the font family is Arial if Arial is available. And you see that changes to that, okay? By the way, when I'm coming to this uh, browser, I'm hitting Command R or Control R to refresh the page in case you missed that. Maybe I want both of these centered, okay? So I can also add an H1 to this to target the H1 tag. So I'm gonna say the H1 tag, I want that to be text aligned, centered. And I also want my paragraph to be centered. So save that and refresh, and there we go, now it's centered. So you can start to do a lot of modifications with that, and that's how CSS works. Okay, now if you're new to CSS, and, and you just, I, I wanna show you guys um, just a little quick demo here to give you a little bit of inspiration to see, show you how powerful CSS can actually be, okay? So what we can do, I wanna show you what we can do with links, okay? So I'm gonna create a link here all right, and let's just say it goes to Google. And I'm gonna say, click me. Okay, and in fact, I'm gonna put that inside a paragraph, just so it's centered. Okay, so we have a link for click me, okay? So, okay, we can change the font, we can change the color, whatever, right? I mean, I mean that's good, don't get me wrong, but. But CSS can get very, very powerful, actually. So watch what I do with this uh, button over the next couple of commands here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to target that link. And, okay, so I'm going to do this. Okay, I'm going to say inline block. And what that gives me the power to do is to add borders and padding and margin and stuff. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a border. Okay, so the border is going to be red. Okay, there we go, now we have a red border around it. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add some padding. Okay. So between click me and the border, there's some padding. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger than that. So 10 pixels on the top and bottom and 15 pixels on the right and the left. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna get rid of that underline. I don't like that underline. So we'll say there's no text decoration. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And then let's say the background, I'm gonna make it a light red. Okay, so let's say uh, RGB. So let's say we make these just like that. So kind of like a pink. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And let's make the color of the text, you know, Black, maybe not black, maybe we'll make it a dark red. Um, so we'll kind of go like that. Maybe that's too dark. Okay, kind of dark red like that. Maybe we'll round off the corners. So we'll give it a border radius. Okay. And then maybe we will add a little bit of a shadow to it. There we go, kind of a nice little thing there. And then what we'll do is we'll, we'll change it if anybody hovers on it. So if anybody hovers on it, um, we'll make the shadow uh, a bit bigger. Or we'll move the shadow a little bit. There we go, okay. And then I don't love how it's so jittery, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of a transition time. 
and there we go, it's kind of smooth there, okay? So you can see how we turned a link into a fancy button here just with CSS, okay? So you can do some very, very powerful things with CSS, actually. All right, so like I said, you guys are gonna be learning a lot of the CSS yourself, w3schools.com, Google tutorials. CSS, I'm still learning new tricks today, you know, still learning a lot of stuff. So, um, and there's even actually a video that I did on my YouTube channel uh, where I recreate the Airbnb landing page. So if you wanna see how the CSS works there, you can watch that video as well. So last lecture, we talked about that when you went to deliver your code, you were delivering a plain kind of looking website because you're only delivering the HTML. Well, this module, you're gonna be delivering the CSS that makes that HTML look really nice and fancy, okay? All right, so that's it for this lecture. You're going to basically be designing stuff with your teammates, uh, having design discussions and coming out with a style guideline, and then you're gonna be adding CSS to your code. All right, that's it for this lecture. See you guys in the next video.